Father, we're very grateful tonight to know that the Lord himself has descended from heaven with a shout to put the church in divine order, to bring all things under the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ coming up into the millennium, knowing, Lord, that requires a great resurrection, which we believe surely is at hand. Father, we thank you that that's because of your presence, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, day, and forever. And we know that, Lord, but we don't know it as we ought to know it. We know that that's the cry that Paul said we don't know as we ought to know, but you did say in your word there'd come a time when we knew as we were known, and this is what we're looking at at this hour, believing this to be true, that your revelation, Lord, is going to break forth in such a way that even as we are known and know each other, for you said that the spirit of man knows the things of man, but Lord, the spirit of God which we have, which we're looking for tonight to know you and your things as we've never known before, to put us, Lord, in that perfect place of redemption that you've got planned for us, taking us into the everlasting realms, Lord, of purity and glory and recreation and new creation for which we stand here tonight in faith, believing, O oh God, that this is absolutely the hour. So help us tonight, Lord, to not only believe this, but Lord, we're looking to you to do what you alone can do, which is to dynamize your word in our behalf within us, O oh God, that we can be the living epistles read and known of all men, though men will not read them, we recognize that, we will not understand, but Lord, we will be in that position. We thank you for it. Help us in our studies tonight, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> this is number eight of the greatest battle ever fought. Now, since man not only has the ability to receive information, but to use that information to forecast the potential from his data, and since his life is made up almost exclusively of that routine, it is a veritable battle of Armageddon for him to switch his mind over to perfect faith in the Word of God. In other words, it's difficult, and we know it is difficult, <coughs> for a person to step out of his own realm into the realm of spiritual understanding uh, and know the things of God and operate in the realm of faith. It is a battle, and it's a great battle. To do so, he will almost totally deny, in most cases, all that he habitually works with, whereby he gets normal daily results in his life, and in some other cases, he must totally deny and repudiate what obtains, or that is what is in this life, even his normal experience and stand on what God has said. <clears throat> now, that's hard. That's almost like asking you, who is a, a dog, to be a bird. That's right. But it's possible because the Bible speaks of transfiguration which means a stepping up, up from the normal to the supranormal. Not abnormal, but supranormal. And a complete change. So let me read this over again. Since man not only has the ability, he does, through the processes, the channels, the input to his mind, downright in his very being, man has not only the ability to receive information, but to use that information to forecast the potential in other words, you've got to have something to work with to get something produced. Hey, Bill didn't notice you, Marie. Lord bless you. Good to see you. Uh, all right. He's got, he, he's, he's got what it takes <clears throat> to get this information to forecast, to look forward to, to literally predicate uh, what should happen if everything is sequentially correct. You know, just like you're taking hydrogen and oxygen in the right quantity, and you put them in into the test tube, and you, light, you ignite them by a spark, electricity, uh, two of H and one of O, you will get water. Now, normally speaking, that's what we're looking at here. Man has that potential to literally predicate or forecast <clears throat> from his data uh, what should lie there. I mean, that's how he is. And since his life is made up almost exclusively of that routine, uh, it's a veritable battle of Armageddon for him to switch his mind over to a perfect faith which abnegates those things when necessary in preference to what God said and then see God do it. 
To do so, he will almost totally deny, and in some cases, uh, all that he habitually works with, whereby he gets normal daily results. <clears throat> now, he won't have to do this under every consideration when you're dealing with faith in God. But you have to be ready for it, to almost totally or totally deny, if not all cases, close to all cases, what he habitually works with, whereby he gets his normal daily results in, in his life, and in some other cases he must totally deny and repudiate what obtains as normal experiences and stand on what God has said. <clears throat> now, if that's not tough, you tell me what is tough. <clears throat> that's what you're looking at. That's why this sermon is titled The Battle of Armageddon. A case in point is Abraham and Sarah. And, of course, we read that in, in Romans, the fourth chapter. But, you know, the beautiful thing is, if you keep reading this, it gets a hold of you. That's why we keep reading it. <clears throat> Paul understood repetition. In fact, the whole Bible is repetition. Study one doctrine, you got all your doctrines. All right. It said here that for the promise, that's verse uh, 13 out of 4, for the promise that he should be heir to the world, of the world, was not to Abraham or his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> if you want to translate that into terms <clears throat> of normal law that I've been talking about here, that we exercise daily in our lives, you can understand here that you don't go that way when you operate in faith any more than the law given to Israel and people attempting to utilize it could get the promise because it's got to be by faith, something you can't work out. All right, for, uh, but through the faith of righteousness, <clears throat> or through the righteousness of faith, I beg your pardon. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise of none effect. Now notice what it says here, the promise which comes by faith cannot come in any other way except by faith. <clears throat> now you can try ever so hard in the realm of what is carnal, and that is not a bad word. You know, there's, you know I'm going to tell you what, we are a bunch of fruitcakes. We, 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 we just don't simply understand the use of words. <clears throat> like the minute you use the word sensual, everybody thinks of sex. That's not true. Sensual has to come from the senses. I can hear, I can feel, I can smell, I can taste I sense it. It's just like you're not very sexually erotic if suddenly you see a cobra going to pop you right on the nose here, and that means death. You don't, you're not worried about it then. You're out of there like a flash of you, and that, that is a sensual reaction, just the same. Not, it's not a bad word, but people are always messing with words, and it's pitiful. <clears throat> so, it says here, the promise is made of none effect. All right. We have to understand that no matter how good any act is and how fine any contemplation is, if it's not what God has said, how we apprehend it by faith, it won't do any good. <clears throat> you simply have to stick right there with faith because the law worketh wrath. For where no law is, there is no transgression. Now that's a hot one right there. If there's no law, there's no transgression. In other words, if God says you can't do it, you're free to do it. How many, how many times are you, have you been free to do things and you thought God didn't want you to do it? Oh, we are the craziest bunch of dopes. Pentecostal hogwash. Nazarene. Methodist. Baptists aren't so bad. They aren't too hot either. They're not so bad. They don't give way to all this, this, this emotional stuff. <laughs> but how many times... Have we hurt ourselves and denied ourselves by being ridiculous legalists? If God hasn't said it, it seems we want to work something up to make God have said it just to put ourselves in a bondage. That's the devil, brother, sister. That's the devil. There's lots of things that we can do <clears throat> that there's absolutely free before God. Oh, listen. It's a nervous, bound-up race today. You know, if, if God doesn't do something for us, let's face it, we're gone. 
You're, 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 you're to the place of faith that is never realizes, brother, sister, if we are not to the place of faith today where we got to just believe God will do out of sheer love and mercy, and he said so, then listen, we are gone because we can't do it ourselves. Don't you understand his word that said, except I send Elijah, just blow the whole thing up. Our minds don't want to accept it. Well, I know. Why, 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 why would he do that? I'll ask you a question. Why wouldn't he do it if he said so? He's God. If he wanted to put you down on this earth here and destroy your body and then bring you up looking like a rhinoceros, that would be his privilege of doing. God can do anything he wants to do. People just don't want to accept it. <clears throat> says there, therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not the knowledge of the law, but that also it's the faith of Abraham, who's the father of all. Now, you were identified with Abraham. And now in identification, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom we believe, even God, who quickens the dead and calls those things which be not as though they were, who against hope, you know, hope was gone, hoped on in faith, that he might become the father of many nations. In other words, just what God said he was going to become. And being not weak in faith, he considered his own body not dead. How can you be weak in faith if God gave you a measure of faith? How can you be how can you weak in faith? Now you and I may be weak, but not in faith. So, well, I, I don't know. Well, there you there you are. Who told the lie? You or God? <laughs> Who's interfering with you? Is God interfering or is the devil interfering? Who is leading? Being not weak in faith, he said, not his own body, not dead. Well, he's a hundred years old, so similarly speaking, the deadness of Sarah's womb also stagger not the promise of God's unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded what he promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore, it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now listen, if you believe, and understand carefully, if you believe the truth of 1 Thessalonians 4.16, you are righteous. And if you don't, you blew it. So, my Brother Vail, I think this. You think all you want. I'm telling you what the truth is. Because that's the promise of this hour. Now, if you don't want it, fine. I'm not going to try to make you have it. I'll just take double quantity myself by the grace of God. See, there's a case in point right here how that Abraham actually had to deny every physical concept, sensate concept, every mental concept, everything that would come as concerning himself in this life. He had to say no. See, Abraham... You're physically unable. He said, that doesn't mean a thing. Said, Man, you got to be crazy, bud. What about Sarah? Doesn't mean a thing. Are you going to stand here and tell me that doesn't mean a thing? He said, in my case, it doesn't because I believe. You know, that was George Mueller. <clears throat> oh, George Mueller. Oh, he was a priceless individual. He had these kids' orphanages, you know, in Britain. And he was world famous for his faith. He was, he was a mighty man of faith. Uh, never had a time when the kids didn't have food. Like Herman G. Alexander said, quoting somebody else, as far as I know, he said, God never failed me any time, though he came within five minutes of doing it. <clears throat> never was he, never what did he ever get a failure. <clears throat> but anyway, they, they prayed the food on the table. There was all plenty. Anyway, George Mueller was coming to Canada. He's going to preach, I think, in Montreal. He's coming down the St. Lawrence River because that's wide open to a degree for large ocean-going vessels. <clears throat> and uh, there was a terrible fog on the, uh, on the river and from the ocean. And the captain said, I'm sorry, Brother Mueller, because the captain was a Christian also. And he said to him, he said, you will never get to your appointment, he said, as you requested, because we are bound by fog and the fog will not lift for so many hours. And George Mueller said, Captain, let us pray. And they got down and they prayed. And as soon as Mueller got through praying, the captain opened his mouth and Mueller said, Captain, do not pray. In the first place, you do not believe what you're going to say. And the second place, the fog has lifted. Hallelujah. It was gone. Boy, I tell you what. Let's go home. And forget we're ever born again or anything else. Do you know something? That is normal. 
That is normal. <clears throat> That's not just fantastic. That is normal. Now, let us understand we do not deny the existence of normal channels of life. We do not deny them. We are not Christian scientists or anything else. We simply see that the power of faith supersedes and overrides their effects. So that in spite of what we term to be normal and common and part of life, we refuse to acknowledge its authority and give ourselves to the truth of the Word of God. <clears throat> now that's what you're looking at in the Battle of Armageddon. All right, we're going to read then on page 22, the bottom of the page, which we closed with last Sunday. <clears throat> and there it is right there, those channels. If you just get them opened up, don't want to just bypass them. Now, we looked at that, and what do we think that really means? Well, my understanding is this. <clears throat> the problem lies in these channels, these inlets, whereby we have our communication with life as we know it and the outworking of life as we know it and the experience of daily living and we are familiar with it. They mean a lot to us. We manipulate them. They manipulate us. We try to come to a happy conclusion. We want to live well, successfully, <clears throat> and all of these things. Well, when it comes to the Word of God, though you recognize them, you do not allow for their integrity and their superiority. Because when it comes to God, they lose their integrity. <clears throat> because ever since the fall, nature has been alienated from God and we are no longer in harmony with the universe. So they don't have an integrity. They can lie. And furthermore, they cannot be used as Adam once used them. And the ground brings forth thorns and thistles. And actually, many things that we think are very nice are simply thorns and thistles. It is like stolen bread is sweet to the taste, but it becomes gravel in the mouth. It's like a beautiful woman when she begins fussing and all you married is beauty. She's like a jewel in a pig's snout. That's the way life is. The Bible has a little way of making them very cute. I love the Bible. <clears throat> These channels, don't just, if you just get them opened up, <clears throat> don't try to bypass them. In other words, we've got to work on them. We simply just don't ignore them thinking they might go away. Or they'll just maybe, just maybe, that's about all you can say. <clears throat> what you're supposed to do here is I understand what Brother Branham is saying. We begin to cram the Word of God down into our innermost being and believe that same word will come back through those same channels so that all we will see, hear, or feel, or imagine, or remember, and love is that same word that is no longer mechanical but now dynamized. <clears throat> That's what we're looking at. In other words, we're looking at the place of coming to understand consciously. As Brother Branham and other men have expressed, we'll be doing it naturally. To simply know where life lies and say, fine and dandy. And I appreciate you and I love you. And you're just exactly right where you are. But when you try to impinge on my mind, where I'm trying to put the word of God, get lost. Finished. <clears throat> I can't have a thing to do with you. I'm sorry. And we'll see this in a little while, what happened to Eve as we get down to Eve again. Then if Satan can get through there. By these conscience. Now, I don't like the word Brother Branham uses, conscience. I think he really means these human perceptions, <clears throat> what we're conscious of. Because your conscience, although is in the mind, and the mind is an organ of the conscience, you might put them together, physical and the, the brain and this together. That word I am not liking because I feel that he's speaking of consciousness more than conscience. <clears throat> this consciousness, consciousness, or this conscious outlook we're in, all these things going on, all these things, <clears throat> he tries to get them. And then when he gets using them at you, then it says he gets right down here at the end of the soul in the mind. Now, he wants to get you as he did Eve. You'll never look at his misrepresentations. 
until first you have let him in here. In other words, Satan will always misrepresent <clears throat> the physical to you, <clears throat> what we call the carnal, the normal, the natural. And he'll misrepresent it. And the misrepresenting is, how are you going to be contrary to this thing? That's contrary to your nature. <clears throat> contrary to your normal experiences. Contrary to what you piled minute upon minute upon minute for maybe 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 solid years. And suddenly look the word of God in the face and say, I believe you. Now that's a battle. And if it weren't for the Lord helping us, the Holy Spirit standing guard to help us, praying with groanings which cannot be uttered, <clears throat> bringing to our mind those things which are down in the subconscious and what has been brought to us, and helping us, we wouldn't have a prayer, brother, sister. Wouldn't have a chance. See? <clears throat> now, Brother Brandon says you have to let him in. Then when he gets in, he's got control. <clears throat> now, that suggests that uh, here that you have to watch Satan lest he come to you and say now, uh, hey, I don't think that word's going to work for you. Uh, that may be for another day. He's going to suggest all kinds of things that the word does not work this way. He just being you know, old like he suggests to eat. <clears throat> then, of course, if we take the suggestion like Eve did, then automatically... We've got to start looking for another way. Now, what way can you look? You can only look to the way that has betrayed you. Because where do you get your sicknesses from? Where do you get your poverty from? Your lack of crops, the bad weather, from out here. Well, that's like a woman asking a man that's a rapist to protect her from rape. That's putting the fox in, in charge of the hen house. You see what he's trying to do to us and does do to us. He wants to get us off the word. <clears throat> then you're off the word where you're at. You're right back where you were that you want to get off of. Now repudiating God, you got a double dose of your problem. It's exactly what he did. You talk about a smart, filthy individual. Yet he's all bluff. <clears throat> See? Now, no wonder we need somebody in us greater than we are to battle and to clean this fellow out of our ways. See, now, now there, no, there's no doubt in my mind that Brother Branham is telling us of his own experience and how he got to where he is and where he was. <clears throat> and he's encouraging us to come to the up to sonship by the same process, but not to try to supersede him. <clears throat> Look, you and I will never be the place where a prophet was. Because first of all, his mind is so fixed, it can blip in and out, just like this. Blip on, blip in. And his absolute duty, especially a prophet of his stature, like, like uh, Samuel, Elijah, Paul, with the ministry of Jesus Christ authenticating him, you and I cannot aspire to be a brother Branham was, so don't pretend. But we can learn... <clears throat> efficiently and perfectly in our own realm and orbit. See? Now, <clears throat> Satan comes along to use these human perceptions to turn them against us instead of we learning to use them for ourselves properly, which is to put them in their own place and supersede them by the Word of God. <clears throat> so, if we let the anti-word come in, the anti-word, which is Satan's word, then he will dynamize that same word so it comes back through all of our channels exactly <clears throat> contrary to what we want because we want God and his word to come back through these channels. <clears throat> In other words, there's got to be an inlet for every outlet. It's the same channel. Now, <clears throat> we showed you that scripture over here in Proverbs the 18th chapter, and it's a tremendous uh, scripture, so therefore I always go back to it. If I can finally go back to it here, stuck in the book. <clears throat> 18, 
<clears throat> and um, a man's belly, that word is really womb, which means an empty place. And a womb is a place for gestation and creativity. So therefore it says that man's got a hollow place inside down here with the ancients called the, soup, the, uh, <clears throat> the solar plexus mind. That's right. And you know how it is when you begin worrying up here soon gets down here. Right here in the solar plexus. That's why people get nauseated. They get dizzy. They get all the blood pressure, anything else. Because the worry comes right down to here. A man's belly. <clears throat> Boom. A, a place that you start by your own attitudes a birth of a creature. A baby. Uh, Abraham got on the ball with Hagar, and they brought forth a rascal. Absolute rascal. Ishmael. Still stinks. Now, that's what we're looking at. You want to bring forth Ishmael? You want to bring forth an Isaac? Okay, here's what it says. A man's womb. <clears throat> the plate of creation. You know, they're trying to tell us today a man could have a baby like a woman. You just do certain things about him. Well, he can have this kind of baby, not the other kind of baby. You know, the world stinks. But you cannot fool me today because every word the world uses, I can find in the Bible for the end time. And Lloyd's doing good too. <clears throat> Learning sharp. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. So therefore, what you bring out here will start a creation. Hold your finger there. <clears throat> Turn with me to the book of Romans. <clears throat> the 10th chapter. <clears throat> now, verse 6, But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart. Don't say down in there your belly. You're going to create something. Who shall ascend to heaven? That's bring Christ down. Who shall descend deep? That is bring Christ up. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and then in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. If therefore <clears throat> you will say what William Branham said. That's right. <clears throat> if you will take the word of God. It will come down here and start a baby. Start a creation. And with the increase of... Now it says a, a man's belly should be satisfied the fruit of his mouth. <clears throat> In other words, the word satisfied here means like if you're going to satisfy a debt or you're going to satisfy something, you've got to go through a certain process and this is the process. <clears throat> Women want children. The only way to be satisfied is a pregnancy. Here's the way you go about doing it. We're not going to mince any words. We're going to just pin things down by the word of God here. <clears throat> so here's how you do. You start talking it. Now, it starts something in here. This makes the satisfaction. There is no other satisfaction that you and I can have outside of this. <clears throat> now, people are highly dissatisfied today. They're emotional. They're running here. They're running there. They're doing this. They're doing that. What is their trouble? They won't let this word come down in here. <clears throat> in the place where the creation is going to go on. Now it's the only thing that's going to satisfy. <clears throat> See? Bible said there's certain things never be satisfied. The fire, the desert, and so on. But this is something that can be satisfied. I can have peace. I can have joy. I can have that life. I can have these things. They are mine if I talk them. And I feed my inner being here. That will satisfy me. Then watch. With the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Now, you cannot get this by leaving to just sit there. you got to pile word upon word upon word upon word upon word until you are knowledgeable in the subject. And I mean knowledgeable. And I mean knowledgeable. I don't mean a smattering. <clears throat> I don't mean you're going to bypass. His brother Brandon said, you don't bypass these channels. Well, just pretend they aren't there. Just ignore them. <clears throat> just act as though they weren't there. They're there, brother, sister. You got to knock them on the head, so to speak. <clears throat> you got to fill them with something new. And here's how we're going to do it. You pile word upon word. <clears throat> now, it says, with the increase of lips shall he be filled. Come to the place 
where he needs to come. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. In other words, what you love <coughs> will be maximized by doing this. Now, if you don't love it to begin with, you start doing it anyway. And you're depending on that to so fill you because it's the Word of God, it'll begin to produce what is in the Word of God. <clears throat> now, there are not enough people doing it. I don't see any church outside of ours even getting together and talking the Word. <clears throat> There's not enough homes filled with it. <clears throat> I admit my own life is not filled with it. If half enough when you consider these things. No way, shape, and form. Now, with that, let's go back to Proverbs 20. We're over to Proverbs 20 <clears throat> and 27. The spirit of man is a candle, Lord, searching inward parts of the belly. <clears throat> now, it tells you right there. How is this going to be done? When the mind takes the word of God, the spirit of man with the spirit of God will take it right down to your soul, right down here in this place of creativity, <clears throat> this place of decision. And many expressions in the Bible all amounts to the same thing in my books. <clears throat> but we can do it. That's why the Bible says you become transfigured. The metamorphosis goes on, that process. <clears throat> All right. Now, we go on reading. So then what does Satan do? Now, he's going to do everything he can to stop what I've been talking about tonight, what the prophet talked about. He begins to use the consciousness of things, your, your consciousness. <clears throat> he begins to use this channel or to use that channel, that outlet. What are those channels? See, taste, feel, smell, hear, imagine, conscience, memory, reason, affections. He begins to use all these different little channels as long as he could get in above this one here. <clears throat> what does he mean by this one here? I believe the word of God in your mind. He'll fill it with that. Sure. He's got to get in your mind first, and you have to accept it. Now, <clears throat> in other words here, everything or anything translated into a mental perception that requires a decision or an ultimate comes by these channels that Brother Branham Tolls tells about. <clears throat> They're through this. Now, from what he says in here, it, is, it, it appears axiomatic that if we repress the natural man and his input and his conclusions, the seed life will take over <clears throat> to give us a victory. <clears throat> in other words, the Brother Branham said to the Indian, the Indian talking to him, he said, there's a white dog and a black dog inside me all the time fight. He said, well, chief, tell me, which dog wins? He said, the one I feed most. <laughs> the man was right. <clears throat> all right. Let's go to Matthew and look at what I just said. It is axi appears axiomatic that if we express, that if we repress the natural man and his input and conclusions, the seed light will take over and give us victory. <clears throat> Matthew 12. I beg your pardon. Not Matthew 12, Matthew 13. 3 to 7. He spake unto them, unto them in parable, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he had sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside. The fowls came, devoured him up. Some fell upon stony places, not much earth. Forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deep miss earth. When the sun came up, they were scorched. They had no root. They withered away. They died. Some fell among thorns. The thorns came up and sprung up and choked them out also. But others fell into good ground and brought forth sixty. And a hundred, brought forth in some 60, 160, or 30. But here's your letting here. <clears throat> now with that, we go to 18 and 23. Hear the parable of the sower. When any man heareth the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then comes a wicked one and catches away that which is sown in his heart. This is he that receives seed by the wayside. But he that received the seed in a stony place, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy receives it. Yet he hath no root in himself, but dureth for a while. When tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he's offended. Now that doesn't mean someone's going to blast you because of the word. It means you get offended because you say, well, God said he'd heal me, and I ain't healed yet. You know, Jesus said, blessed is the man who's not offended in me. And I want to say this, there are very few blessed people. He also received word amongst the seed among the thorns, as he that heareth the word, and the care of this world. Here's your brother Bram said, we are. And the deceitfulness of riches and choke the word becomes unfruitful. <clears throat> but he that received the word in the good ground, is he that heareth the word, understands it, which also bringeth fruit, beareth fruit, brings forth some a hundred, some sixty, some and thirty. Now what you see here is this person 
<coughs> studies to divide the word correctly so he knows where he stands in his faith in the word of God and then he stands there till he gets it. <coughs> and he doesn't fool around with all kinds of thoughts. He just says, what does the word say? <coughs> and everybody says, well, you got to do this. He said, now hold it. That's not what the word said. See, people just don't want to face up to the word. <clears throat> You've got to do it. Okay, let's keep reading. Now, listen, he says. It can batter against you. What can batter against you? Your carnal input. Now, remember, Satan has already got our minds by us being sinners. And the only way to get rid of that bad mind <clears throat> is through... Almighty God's word transfiguring us with the help of the Holy Spirit. Now it says all this input, this carnal input, and this is normal, natural, and good in its right position. <clears throat> now you don't you don't obviate some things. Like there's a fellow, and I, I know his name, but you talk about a kook. Brother Branham mentioned, you know, looking at these women that go down the street, you know, with not enough clothes on. You know, the Feels like a postage stamp. <clears throat> he said, don't even look at it. Close your eyes to it. So this guy was driving a car, and a woman crossed in front of him. And just he closed his eyes and almost ran her down. Now, well, that's plumb stupid. He did it. He plumb stupid. Took an axe and hit his television set. Why, well, he didn't kill himself. That's dangerous. His wife won't turn around and bought another because she was a nice little Catholic girl. She's, good. She's a nice woman. Not a thing wrong with her or a bit. Concerning her and her religion, she's just fine because that's what she was. <clears throat> she probably went on and bought another one. So before it's over, they end up in divorce court. I look people for him and say, don't be stupid, please. I'm not talking to stupid people, am I? You know, you, you, that's not what a life of faith and what this message is about, being idiots. God gave you eyes to see. The Bible said God made eyes to see. He made the ears to hear and the mouth to talk. And, and right down the line, the hands and all to be sensate. He gave this. And when he finished, he said, it's good. He never said, well, it's too bad I made this son of mine a, a, a swine hunt or something, a pig. But he just couldn't help myself. He said, it's good. And Eve was good in her place, too. It's when they just did the wrong thing with the right thing. <clears throat> like I often say, look at, you know, you you don't you don't try to use a uh, a table knife for a pitchfork for heaven's sake, smart enough. What are you trying to dig a ditch for with it with a, with a, with a, with a tablespoon? You got a backhoe, use the backhoe. You know, I, you know, people, we're we're just, hey, look, it seems we've been putting the devil's centrifuge, and he's been very successful. <clears throat> All right, this which is in the realm of the sensate which we normally use, and it's good as we use it in the place where God put it. But remember, it's like Abraham over here in the book of Romans. <clears throat> so let's read it to get the picture. We'll finally get something one page done tonight. Anyway, we're not going anywhere, are we? <clears throat> For the time being. All right, the fourth chapter of Romans. What should we say then that Abraham, our father, is pertaining to the flesh is found? For if Abraham were justified by works, we, uh, he hath were of the glory, but not before God. He should do good things. He should be a fine man. He should be a good boyfriend. And then a good husband. And a good father. And a good citizen. He should be. No doubt about it. But don't stand on that in the sight of God. That's all. Well, then you should <clears throat> be well aware with good eyes, with good ears, with good input. Every one of us, we're going to come back to the millennium that way. Nothing wrong with it. But listen, in this regard, forget it. <clears throat> You're in two different wavelengths. Let's prove it. I'm really beating a dead horse because we all believe this. We got to get inspired. That's all. But we all know what I'm talking about. Look at verse 11, 1 Corinthians 2. For what man knoweth the things of man save the spirit of man which is in him? 
Even so the things of God knoweth no man, period. But God. <clears throat> two different wavelengths. Two different spirits. But fortunately, through the blood, there's a rebirth. So that he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. And we can, if we constantly repress the input. There is no input from man into God. No. That's why every church except the born-again church is going to hell. Because they are rotten in their stinking, filthy pride of the devil. We have no input toward God. But we tried every single time. That's what we are looking at. <clears throat> God wants to have an input in us. That's what Satan wants. So, talking about this input, <clears throat> it can batter against you, but it can't get to you unless you accept it. Like Brother Brandon talked about cancer. Cancer has no power unless you accept it. <clears throat> Nothing has any power until you accept it. When Satan walked up to Eve and said, you know the fruit's present, she stopped a moment. Oh, what a mistake when she stopped for a moment. Now, let's check little Eve out here. <clears throat> when the devil said, hey, take a look at this tree. Boy, he said, I'm sure the beautiful eyes of yours will appreciate this lovely tree. She said, what did you say? Oh, he said, those limpid, beautiful poos, those orbs of sheer delight, right from the hand of God. I can see that you will appreciate this. And she said, tell me more. Yeah. I'm not lying. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. She was completely razzle-dazzled by him. <clears throat> All right. Where is it found anyway? In the third chapter... <clears throat> The serpent comes in verse 4, and he said, The serpent said to the woman, Oh, let's see, let me read first of all. <clears throat> the serpent came to the Garden of Eden, and he said to the woman, in verse 1, Yea, it had did God really say to you, Shall not eat every tree of the garden? <clears throat> the woman said, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the tree, fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. <clears throat> now, you understand right here that this was not a normal tree you could chomp on and eat fruit of because the Bible said the trees that God planted, and this was not planted, it was just standing there. You could eat it all. They weren't poisonous. <clears throat> so this is something different. The serpent said, You shall not surely die. For the Lord doth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God's knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, did eat, and gave also to her husband that he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew they were naked, and they sewed leaves together, fig leaves together, and made themselves apron. I want you to notice here, brother, sister, <clears throat> that this is exactly what I said before about Revelation 7, 17, 1 to 7, the beautiful organized church of the last day. The harlot Filthy church of the last day, a killer, with the blood of the martyrs in it, <clears throat> looked very beautiful and wonderful. It wasn't what it appeared to be. It's Fanero. Wasn't it's Fanero? It was a hypocrite, an absolute hypocrite. It was not what it was supposed to be, and neither is the end time church. Let's take a look at the seventh, let's take a look at the sixth verse again. And one of saw the tree was good for food and pleasant to the eye. Why, she said, that settles it. The properties are wonderful. Now, listen, what I'm trying to show you this, in verse 7, when they had taken after the fact, <clears throat> the tree became unveiled as to its reality. <clears throat> it was a hypocrite tree. And its true fanero, its true character, was death. Now, the people today look at the modern church. 
And the modern church says, oh, we said, why? We're rich. We're increased in goods. And we don't lack a thing. We're wonderful. And the phanero is, you're wretched, miserable, blind, and naked, and don't have a thing. <clears throat> now, brother, sister, what tree did she take up, and what tree is being taken up today? <clears throat> the church. <clears throat> Now, we can't sit here and say, well, well, Brother Vale, I resent that because you see my church. You're as rotten as your church. And you're going to burn with your church. And don't tell me you're not, because I'm not a fool. Because you're pronounced filthy. I don't care what you are. This is, it takes them all in. <clears throat> we got to understand that. The church crucifies to itself the Son of God afresh. And puts him to an open shame. What open shame? Because he comes down here in the appearing and he shows in the phanero exactly who and what he is. And they say, away with it. We don't want it. He doesn't want it either. <clears throat> the fruit was pleasant, she saw. <clears throat> she looked at the whole thing. Now, The eyes were opened, <clears throat> and then it was too late. Their eyes were opened after the fact. <clears throat> it was too late. So there'll be people crying to the mountains, fall on us. There'll be people in this message crying the same thing. Because they're not in the message at all. <clears throat> no, they're not in the message. They've sold themselves out. It's too late. Let's go to Second Thessalonians where it's too late. <clears throat> you know, we can sit around <clears throat> picking our teeth or what have you, fooling ourselves. <clears throat> Verse 8, then shall the wicked be revealed. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians 2. Whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And shall destroy the brightness of his presence. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. With all the seamless of unrighteousness, them that perished. Because they received not the love of the truth, they might be saved. You know something here? <clears throat> There's a couple of proofs right here. One is the unrecognized presence of Christ who has already come down. The next is the unrecognized presence of Satan who comes down. Be too late. <clears throat> too late. <clears throat> With all deceivers unrighteous and them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, they might be saved. And for this cause, because they would not receive the truth, a strong delusion comes, <clears throat> and they're damned. The same as took place in the Garden of Eden. <clears throat> and the Garden of Eden situation is right now today, and I hope you understand what I'm saying. Many people don't understand what I'm talking about. Luke chapter 17. <clears throat> they asked him, when does the kingdom of God come? And he said, the kingdom of God comes with an observation. It'll come, you won't even know it's here and it's here. And he said, it's in your midst right now. He was standing there. <clears throat> Brother Brandon said, the garden of Eden was God's righteous government upon earth. <clears throat> now, at that time, Satan was right there confronting God. At that time, they fell. At that time, the tree of life was there. At that time, he could have stuck forth his hand and taken the tree of life, and God said no. Then you've got to come back where the tree of life is, and Adam is in sin, and the devil is standing there, and it's right here today. What are you looking for? Immortality. <clears throat> now, the people will know after the fact and Brother Branham said, they'll be saying, wasn't this to happen? What wasn't that to happen? Wasn't this to be? And wasn't that? And they say, aha. It was, and you missed it. And now people say, I don't believe it. Then don't believe it. Read your Bible, and in every single case it took place that way. But I'm different. Are you different? You lying hypocrite, you. You spit right in the face of God and call yourself a Christian? You might find you a Christian. You've sold out to every spirit of hell. It's exactly. And I hope nobody is sounding my voice, and on the tapes it has to take that. And say, Brother Bill, I'm glad I can see 
and understand and appreciate the grace of Almighty God. If my loved ones won't go deep, I'll not turn back. <clears throat> my wife has her ultimate. If I turn back, she better go on. My children don't come. It's, I, I can't help it. When my mother died a heathen, my father died a heathen, that's not my business. Every man shall bear his own burden. <clears throat> You'll stand on your own two feet, brother and sister. Don't talk about your wife, your husband, your kids, your this, your that. So what about you? <clears throat> Have you received the token? Are you piling word upon word? That's the thing to count. That's the only thing that counts. Nothing else worth considering. <clears throat> now, they, they, here, it's too late. It's too late when 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, 16, right down the line comes. <clears throat> Let's just take a look at it. It's after the fact, too, <clears throat> because they'll say, hey, wasn't there supposed to be a, an appearing, which they call the rapture hogwash. The appearing comes before the rapture. The rapture is the coming. <clears throat> So the Lord himself says, him, shout with the voice of action and trumpet God and then Christ rise first. <clears throat> but it says in verse in verse five, chapter five, but in times and seasons, brethren, we have no no need of any. You know yourself heard the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. When they say peace and safety, then comes sudden destruction upon them. That's available upon a woman's child, they shall not escape. <clears throat> but you, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. You're the children of light. The children of what light? What light? They got to have some kind of light <clears throat> because evidently there's going to be a whole lot of people in darkness. <clears throat> and the thief coming at night tells you very, very certainly <clears throat> that you're not going to know it until they're spoiled. Because if you'd have known, you'd have stopped just spoiling it. But the thief comes and he's spoiled. That means too late. They find out he's come and gone. Secret rapture? Uh-uh. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Not at all. The appearing. The rapture is secret in so far. Who's going to know? Who's going to care about it? <clears throat> but there's a big difference in the two of them. Yep, right down the line. <clears throat> all right. Now, what we're talking about here, let's read a little further. But this, now he says here, don't stop for anything the same as Eve did. You've got the message. Jesus lives. That's Hebrews 13, 8. God's a healer. That's Mark 16. That's the message. What did he say the message was? My message is to declare that he is here. And what did he always say about he being here? He said if Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and if he's here now in the form of the Holy Ghost, in a pillar of fire, he is obligated to do exactly what he did back there. He'll do it now for the Gentiles. And he did it. <clears throat> That's the message. <clears throat> Don't stop for anything. No reasoning. Nothing else. See? <clears throat> now what Eve thought she saw, she didn't get. What we see, we do get. <clears throat> now, take Abraham. What if he'd stop for reasoning when God told him he was going to have a baby with Sarah and she was 65 and him 75 and when he was 100 years old and she was 90, he still confessed that God's word was true and he called those things that were not as though they were. That's true. You have to call those things not as though they were. <clears throat> you have to call those things that are as though they were not too. See, he even hoped. Was there any hope? He didn't even use hope. In other words, this is not self-hypnosis, but the feeding of the inner man until that man can rise with power Greater is he that's in me than I myself. But in Christ I can do all things. I'm a believer. I am the word by receiving the word. <clears throat> I'm master of all circumstances because of what he said and what he is. All right, let's keep reading. Well, you see, I hope I can get all right. I hope I can get well. I hope I can get the Holy Ghost. I hope I'm a Christian. I hope to do this. You don't want that. Now, Brother Branham uses the word hope here <clears throat> in a beautiful way, which means wishy-washy. I really want it, but I, I'm sure I won't get it. You know how it is with my luck. I have a picnic on Wednesday, but it's going to rain. Now, I hope it doesn't rain, but it will rain. You know my luck. <clears throat> so he uses that wishy-washy flim-flam. 
Now, in the Greek, the word hope is above the word faith. You couldn't have a wishy-washy word. Now remaineth faith, hope, and love. <clears throat> that triumvirate of virtues. You couldn't do it. But he's using it the way people are. And Peter, Abraham wasn't that way. Now, you don't want that way. Abraham never even looked at that. Amen. Against hope, he still believed God's word. Faith is beyond hope. Faith comes from back here in the inside. Faith comes from here. How does he get in? Through the mind, this door, the battlefront standing there. <clears throat> now, we are to not use our own thinking and our own life experiences. We are to draw upon the experience of Abraham to learn from him and then do what he did. And Abraham had to believe that he was what God said he was. That was the most important thing. <clears throat> God said, <clears throat> you are a father of nations. We are not the father of nations. We're manifested son. Amen. On the grounds of believing and seeing what the prophet came through by the power of God. In other words, we see the link up. God and the prophet. <clears throat> we understand the prophet was here waiting. God came on the scene. God had his prophet already. Revelation 10 and 7. So Revelation 10 and 1 could come on down. <clears throat> All right. We understand then that we are believers. That we are the living word of God made manifest on the very grounds of what the prophet taught us here. We accept it. Now, though faith has always been the element of the future, or faith always has the element of the future, put it that way, you want that better. Though faith always has an element of the future in it. Because manifestation is a future thing that you're looking for. Faith itself is always present tense or even past tense. <clears throat> in other words, you believe you have received it, you shall get it. <clears throat> you believe it is yours <clears throat> on the word of God's grounds, you're going to get it. Abraham believed he already was a father of multitudes through Sarah when she was never able to have a baby in the first place. <clears throat> now, what makes you think of the age of 90? She'd not be, be productive. You say, that's hogwash. A fine dandy. It's hogwashed everybody but God. You see, that was one thing Abraham had to put aside. He had to put aside, listen, he and she had to put aside the channels of reproduction. You follow what I'm saying? They had to put aside the channels of reproduction. He was unable to perform the act, and it wouldn't do one bit of good if he could. He had to put it aside. <clears throat> you know something? It was already put aside for his hundred years and her ninety, if they'd only known. Then by piling word upon word, the word of God came through the reproductive channels, and he was perfectly a whole young man, and she a young woman, and they had the baby. And that's exactly what Brother Branham was talking about. Reverse the channels. Put them to one side until the word of God can back through. And that's what's wrong with young men and young women. They don't understand the understanding of, of, of reproduction. <clears throat> they don't understand it at all. <clears throat> They've got themselves a the wrong element. They could be very happy if they chose to be continent and understand the working of those channels as God ordained it. They'd be a happy, unrepressed husband and wife, young man, young woman, instead of the crap and the crud we got today. You never taught our children right concerning reproduction. And I don't think we're going to. We haven't got time. In some cases, some of you sitting here, you got boys and girls who are too late already. Every generation blows it. <clears throat> All things are pure to the pure in heart. Where do you get your pure heart? We don't need to look with jaundiced eyes. Get the channels lined up. You don't get rid of the channels, brother sister. You just get it. You start using the way God wanted. <clears throat> I heard a lovely thing said today. I didn't realize that Charlie Cox had ever said this concerning Brother Branham. Brother Branham was always a good hunter. But after the seals opened, 
He'd go out and sit in the woods and the squirrels would come up to him. Sadhu Sundar Singh had a tiger come up. Lick his hand, <coughs> purr like a kitten, play with him. Once in a while, God does show that in him there is reconciliation. But we don't like reconciliation because we're too stuck on our sin, Joe. Even those who are the best of people who learn a few things in life, just maybe accidentally or by the grace of God somehow. Too stuck on it. We still labor for the bread that perishes. So Brother Brown told Jack Palmer, he said, Jack, don't ask God for a lot of things. Just live with Christ. <clears throat> They'll come. There comes a time when you begin obeying rules and put your senses under. You can't account for it, but you just know that you know. Oh, yeah. You know that you know, and God knows that you know, too. Yeah, faith is not wishful thinking or wistful thinking. You know, wistful thinking, a kind of a yearning. He's a, she's such a wistful person. I sat there wistfully. Faith does not sit wishfully or wistfully. Faith doesn't sit at all, really. Until God says sit, it's very aggressive. And it's aggressive toward the enemy and the senses in our lives. Now when you get the battle set in array, the devil will be sitting right at every heart this morning. He's sitting at this little girl's heart. She's the one dying of cancer or whatever. <clears throat> sitting at her heart, sitting at your heart, sitting all around her. He said, oh, I've seen it tried before. I've heard that before. <clears throat> Brother Rand says, cast him out with his big sneer. That's all, cast him out. What did the Bible say in our text here about Peter? 1 Peter 5, 8 to 9, cast him out. What's casting him out? Brother Ben says, ignoring him. Then he blurts out, we've been trained wrong, I think. What's the matter with us preachers? Wonder what kind of training we've had instead of God's training for this great battle. In other words, the mind has not been word trained. In fact, the main thrust of secular education is to rid the mind of the word for the church has already repudiated the truth. <clears throat> Why should we fuss at the government? <clears throat> when the church denies the power of prayer, except in some nice little way to be sound religious, you know, denies the word of God that gives you the ability to pray or the right to pray. <clears throat> Then now suddenly the state takes a hand. And it's all my horrors. Why horrors? You think Dr. Frankenstein should have had any problem with the monster he created? <clears throat> he made the monster. If the monster went through breaking up the laboratory and busting his neck and his girlfriend's neck, what's he got to cuss about and fuss about? He asked for it. What's the church trying to talk for now? It blew it in the first place. It's the one as a, an editorial, not an editor, many years ago in the paper. He said, I don't understand the seminaries. I can't understand it. He said, we send people there to preach God, to learn God, to teach God, and they come home denying God. What are they teaching? <clears throat> I got an article on the Reader's Digest. I haven't got time to read tonight. Didn't bring it anyway. I only read what I got here. <clears throat> This person is an anthropologist. And he tells how lovely the spirit of Christ is, but he believes in evolution. And the spirit of Christ is just getting nicer and nicer and nicer. This is nicer with the atomic bomb? Under Stalin less than 50 years ago? And the garbage chub will kick out without a doubt. I like the guy. He's not going to last, I don't think. <clears throat> I don't understand people. <clears throat> I'm not meant to understand. What's the difference? Okay. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Cast him out. We've been trained wrong. How many minutes? <clears throat> all right, Lenny. Well, okay. We don't need to take all that time. Matthew 24. Said to be also, and also Daniel 12 said, there'd be a time of trouble. Such as never like on the earth before. And we're living in that time when culture and education and things are smothered over the word of God and got into reasonings and so forth. The battle is now. What's the big battle? Hebrews 13, 8. 
Who stand? Hallelujah. The battle is ready to go. She's in her way now. <clears throat> all right. I'll read to you. <clears throat> First of all, this article from Reader's Digest on Pornography. Sexual Madness. Manipulating the First Amendment, pornographers have claimed their so-called right to open up cesspools of sexual slime. And in so doing, have taken priority over the rights and welfare of an entire generation of children. And everybody's screaming, our children, our children, our children. Oh, our poor children. Every car's got to stop down the road for every school bus. Oh, yeah. Everything you do, our children. You bunch of filthy, lying hypocrites from the president on down. Bunch of swine from right from the heart. <clears throat> what do they care about the kids? When shell-shocked parents complain about cable porn accidentally reaching their children, they are told, buy a lockout box for your TV set. But what's really being locked out is plain ordinary decency and the inalienable right to protect children from psychic damage and from chilling effects of pornography. The smut assaulting our sensibilities today capitalizes on violent, explicit depictions of sexual acts, heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual. It's with animals, too. Come on, face it. It includes portrayals of orgies, incest, bestiality, sadomasochism, uh, uh, bondage, necrophilia, sodomy, even blueprints of raping women with everything from loaded guns to so-and-so and so-and-so. We didn't mention it. If these descriptions shock you as an adult, then imagine the effects upon the emotional de development of our children. What's even more shocking is this potentially traumatizing hardcore pornographers reaching American children for one reason only. Obscenity laws are not being enforced. Obscenity is illegal. And the federal government has strict laws against the mailing and interstate transporting and importing of obscene materials. There is also a federal broadcasting law prohibiting, prohibiting pro obscene programming. Furthermore, almost every state has its own obscenity law. The obscenity laws are so rarely enforced that most citizens don't even realize pornography is illegal. When I asked 24 people if they thought the hardcore pornogra pornographic magazines on display at the newsstands are legal, the unanimous response was they must be or they wouldn't be here. <clears throat> Why aren't states and federal obscenity laws being enforced? I asked that question in 1975 in, in an interview with Manhattan District Attorney Robert Morgenthau who was and still is responsible for the investigation of prosecution in Manhattan, the violation against New York State obscenity laws, <clears throat> one of the strongest in the nation. Morgenthau's excuse was limited financial resources, with priority given to the prosecution of murders, rapists, and burglars. Little has changed since then. Hardly a penny has been found in all the years in force uh, New York's pornographic or adult uh, porn a law against adult pornography, in which organized crime is heavily involved. With few exceptions, this claim no priority, limited resource, it preva excuse prevails among local prosecutors throughout the country. So why do you bother voting them in? What about Logan County, Miami, the whole bunch of them? Forget it. What city? I, I used to travel America, left and right, and up and down, and inside out. <clears throat> when I first started traveling, Dayton didn't have obscene shows. They got a certain mayor in there. Just think back. Think back after Hall. Who got in? And Dayton had more pornographic picture shows advertised than any paper in the nation I'd run across. Find out who runs it. Go ahead. <clears throat> what about the federal laws? What about Uncle Sam excuse in 1986? <clears throat> uh, For instance, U.S. Post Inspector Service investigated only nine cases proving prohibitive mailing of adult pornography, resulting in four convictions, an appealing record concerning the tons of filth going through the Daily Mail, video cassettes, everything else. In 19, in, in, I purchased in 1985 three hardcore pornographic magazines openly displayed in the Vermont count, Country Store. Since two were published in Cleveland and one in New York, there was no question that the federal law prohibiting interstate transportation of obscene materials had been violated. Now, you, you ship ice cream back and forth. They'll throw you in jail for life. Yeah. <clears throat> when I telephoned the FBI and asked for appointments to place in their hands evidence of illegal smut, two agents politely rejected my request with the explanation that only child porn was being investigated because of limited resources. And we're trying to get a bomb to fight Russia? Come on, forget it. Forget it. The enemy is within the fourth column. The investigation of vicinity is in a holding pattern until the courts give us a better a definition. 
The present test for obscenity asks, among other criteria, whether the average person applying contemporary community standards would find that the work taken as a whole appeals to purian interests. The, those two key words, community standards, seem to paralyze the FBI and our nation's prosecutors. Yet past generations, not stripped of common sense, had no trouble at all in defining obscenity. It was simply dirty books and dirty pictures to be kept away from kids. <clears throat> Today, our scientific proof is required that obscenity is harmful. We need research grants and commissions and studies. They did it for years about whether the speed killed, what kills on the road. Millions of dollars spent proof it is faulty, lousy driving and rotten mechanical in the mechanics in the car. It's only the speed kills a little bit quicker. But speed has never killed. But they're going to be saying it's killed, and it's killed. Why? Because they're liars, and they want to twist you around and make a few bucks for your speeding. I am not for speeding, brother. Sith. The law says don't speed. But they're liars. You can get killed just as dead 35 miles an hour when your car goes out of control with a flat tire and you're hit by a truck or a ton of bricks. <clears throat> it's been proven by millions of dollars spent, but they're not going to admit it. <clears throat> Neither will doctors. When they had the doctor strike in California for five days, nobody died. As soon as they got back on the job, they began dying like flies again. <clears throat> <laughs> what do you want for nickel? We need to expose young men. We need to expose young men to violent pornography and isolation booths. Hook up their genitals, electrodes, their chest to bellows, and then pick their brains in order to reach a conclusion my grandparents could have told them in a minute. That continued exposure to smut darkens the deepest recesses of men's minds. Hey, that person's my kind of a person to use language like that. Hit them right where it belongs. That's part of it. <clears throat> Drugs. Here we are. How much time you got there? Okay, I'll read it. Sophomores in the health class in Lancaster, Pennsylvania High School, totally absorbed in it by us as a smooth voiced narrator for the film strip Marijuana Updates, its use and abuse, extolled the medicinal qualities of the plant, tracing its use back to the late Stone Age. Throughout history, he stressed, man has been a drug user. For at least 5,000 years, cannabis has supplied one of his favorite intoxicants. Then he described pot's pleasurable effects, the euphoric feeling of relaxation, contentment, inner satisfaction, the sensation of floating beyond reality. The 55-minute cassette contained only 105 seconds of the pot's possible effects, and it's claimed that the role of cannabis is causing them <clears throat> has not yet been confirmed. One of the greatest exponents of, of pot for years now has been truly converted to understand it is terribly detrimental and has exposed it 100%, but they won't use the books. <clears throat> now, who is doing this in the schools? The final 19 minutes of the film were devoted to promoting the legalization of marijuana, echoing the platform of the Pro-Pot National Organization of Reform of Marijuana Laws, M-O-R-M-L. Obviously, said one indignant 15-year-old, 15-year-old kid. Everything I've been told about pot is wrong. Now I am going to try it. <clears throat> this film strip currently sold by the Guidance Associates for $179, a large and respected producer of audiovisual materials for schools. Marijuana update released in 1975. There's never been updated to reflect the current knowledge about the dangers of pot. During a recent presentation, a group of six to eight to sixth graders, a nationally known health educator declared any drug can be used in a positive manner. How wonderful. Typical to many miseducators, he lumped medication and illegal drugs together. For example, he listed aspirin on the blackboard as a might be narcotic or a barbiturate by angel dust, an, an, angel, an analgesic, a pain reliever. Not surprisingly, that'll drive you completely crazy, that one. Completely crazy and destroy you, angel dust. Not surprising when he asked, how many of you are drug users? All six hand, six hand, six graders raised their hands. They took aspirin, you see. <clears throat> His further instruction included these phrases: "Heroin can be used in a bad way or a good way." Well, sex can too. Let's go out and rape then. Do what we want to do. Let's start with the prosecutor's wife, shall we? And their daughters. Let's just get words hit. No, we don't believe in doing that. We've got a right to raise our voices. <clears throat> That's why I send money to these outfits to try to do something about this. 
Heroin can be used in a good, bad, or a bad way or a good way. It's a person who is misusing the drug. The drug itself is not bad. Now, what's a kid going to do? How, how, do, they, how do they start overloading? <clears throat> National tragedy. And then they said, here they said to the kids, question your parents about the drugs they use. If you can convince them then that your drug use is responsible, you may be able to allay their anxiety. Drugs are fascinating because they can change our awareness. Occasional snorting of cocaine is in social situations probably not harmful. With drug use running rampant, Hawkins asked, why are our children being exposed to such garbage? Each year, drug abuse has been the number one <clears throat> on, this, on, the, on the chart. Another opening survey, this one, with 500,000 children in grades 4 through 12, was published by the Weekly Reader last spring <clears throat> when they asked to circle, the one thing you think is most important for schools to do to fight drugs. And they said, teach us the facts. Here's something on no drugs. Some books and other material used in schools contain virtual commercials for illegal drugs. For example, the three books on drug abuse most commonly found in school libraries are today Chocolate to Morphine, The Natural Mind, both listed by Wheel, <coughs> Andrew Wheel, and, and, illicit, and Illicit Drugs <coughs> by Edward M. Beecher, the editors of, think of this now, Consumer Reports. Do you wonder why Consumer Reports give you all those bum steers? A bunch of hop heads. This, this book is pure poison, this one here. What adventure youngster would not want to try mescaline or LSD, for example, after eating illicit and illicit drugs? Page 337. That mescaline users have found the most spectacular a phase comprises the kaleidoscopic play of visual hallucinations in an indescribably rich colors. The seeing of music in color or hearing of a painting in music. Page 364 describes a 1960 study finding LSD valuable as a therapeutic tool, a road to love and better relationships, a door to religious experience, a release from anxiety and trouble. That your kids are being taught that. There's page after page. Armageddon? Are you kidding? <clears throat> We've lost the battle. This is the seventh church age. <clears throat> William Branham was that prophet. It's all over. Too late. They didn't believe. Look what a great opposition we've got. That's enough. Good place to start next Sunday. Sunday ever comes. Who <clears throat> doesn't praise the Lord? Sudden death, sudden glory. Sudden glory, all the better. The sudder the better, the more glory there. <clears throat> Let's rise and be dismissed. <clears throat> Sunday, 1030. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, we want to praise and thank you. <clears throat> that we know that this word is absolutely true for our day. Every single thing in the message, even the current words are there. The sorcerer is there in the Bible, the one that de deals in drugs and all that. He's right there, right in the church, the whole bit. There isn't anything, Lord, that isn't there. Nothing absolutely is coming to the full finish, to the end, even, Lord, as you came in seven. A complete revelation, that which is perfect has come. Now, Lord God, is a complete spirit of righteousness and wonderment has come upon the earth. So has also the devil and his revelations and what he's doing. The Lord, thank God we're not unaware of it. And tonight, Lord, by faith, we take hold of the promises and claim them for our children never before and talk to them this word in the right way and show them the right truth, the things of Almighty God. And begin, Lord, to deal with each other as we ought to deal with each other in love and understanding, just teaching this word back and forth until it fills our very lives and takes over and every channel is filled with the word of Almighty God and then begins to come forth, Lord. And we know it's going to produce Davids who don't care two bits for how big the Goliaths are, how fast they can run, how they're dressed, and how much damage they think they can do. For, Lord, we don't even engage in the battle, for the battle is yours. We just take the stone of the Word of God and sling it with the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, and we know there's nothing to stand before us. We're not trying to be dramatic, Lord. We're not trying to take some great thing to ourselves, but, Lord, we're just saying back to you what we know has been accomplished by the you in the days gone by, what we've seen in our own hour. And, Lord God, what is right here in our midst at this hour, that we can more than arise to every occasion 
and come forth, Lord, with your love and your spirit and your goodness manifesting thoroughly in our hearts, minds, and lives. Be with everyone tonight, Lord. We just praise and thank everyone present. Ask him, my God, to inflame our hearts red hot. Make our chimneys red hot. These flues, Lord, the prophet of our red hot with the fiery word of God burning in us until it burns up every bit of dross. And, Lord, we become the people that you want us to be, which we know exactly how our, our senses work, our bodies work, our minds work, these things work. And then we just take your word, Lord, and supersede it all and bring it to one happy conclusion, Lord, which you want to bring it to, which we know, Lord, is going to end in a uh, coming forth of, in a resurrection and a transfiguration of your saints, Lord. And we know that, as Brother Brandon said, if we're not bright, there's a bride out there somewhere. And may we have the same humility and grace that he had, that by your grace, Lord, we won't stand in our way. We just know these things are here. And we're glad, Lord, that we can stand by. If we are not a pride of the part of the bride, at least we're friends of the bridegroom. We certainly believe we are. But, Father, we go beyond that. We believe that we are bride. We believe that we are a part of this end-time revelation. And if this is not the end time revelation, we have no hesitation in the meeting, Lord, because we're honest before you and before, before men. We are a part of this word. And we are, we, that's, we just stand with it. We're, we just, that's how we are. And then, Lord, if we're wrong, we know that we are wrong. If you, you say we're wrong with the, after it's all over, then we're wrong. But, Father, at this time, we just have to admit candidly that this is what we believe. And we don't say we believe it in a way that's tremendous, tremendous. We just believe it. And we just say that we're committed to it, Lord. That it's, what else can we say? You know our hearts. You know our minds. And, and we have taken this, O oh God. We believe there's nothing else to take. We believe that this is it. So <clears throat> here we are, Lord. We just pray now that, that in, in our hearts now, believing this is it and believing what the prophet said and believing what your own word has told us, and we see it laced back and forth in the scripture, that you're going to dynamize this. And there's going to be a people, Lord, who absolutely reach forth the hand in the present condition and walk plumb into immortality as the prophet said, a sweep would go over us, and here we are completely immortal, ready for the rapture in the, in the, in the millennium. And so, Father God in heaven, we believe that somebody's going to be that way, unless, who knows? <clears throat> but, Father, we, we just say the best we know, and, and how we know, Lord, we, we believe that this is it. And we thank you, Lord, that, that we're depending on you, O oh, thou great God Jehovah in our midst tonight, we're depending on you to dynamize this and make us, and turn our flues red hot with the holy, fervent word of God, that stimulator revelation until, Father, we are changed from center to circumference. And then, Lord, the circumference, amen, takes over nature. We believe that's happening too. Bless each one in divine presence, Lord. May not one person here leave this building without some uh, fitting of grace and something poured into hearts, minds, and souls, especially souls, Lord. And in the body is necessary because we have taken this message for healing. And we believe, Lord God, that somehow, some way, this dynamized word is going to work in these mortal members. We know it's going to work to, to immortality. How much then, certainly, it'll work for healings. So help us tonight to believe that. And our faith rising and soaring, going ahead, we, Lord, shall invariably grow richer and deeper in our Christ until your spirit, Lord, witnesses with us in such a way we know we're walking daily, daily walking with you, with the good shepherd leading us. Unto thee we commend our souls tonight, O God, and give thee the glory in Jesus' name, amen. Take the name of Jesus with you. Take the name of Jesus with you.